All right, what's good, everybody? Welcome to my second annual AP Entertainment NBA Draft Watch Along. I am AP. I am a continually, always depressed, hopeless Wizards fan. But welcome to my channel. I re really appreciate you hanging out with me tonight. Uh, Adam Silver just finished his monologue there, which was uh, very lovely. Uh, I was looking at the clock there for a second, but it's done. We're ready to go. And uh, draft night for the Wizards... Pretty much always hope that never happens. Obviously, we had John Wall, Bradley Beal, technically a hit, and it's been pretty much nothing but disappointment ever since. Although, shout out to Kelly Oubre. But, breaking news! Sound the alarm! <laughs> we have not one. We have not two. We have three first-round picks tonight as Denny Obdia is back, 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 gone! Out of the nation's capital, we just sent him to Portland for the number 14 pick tonight. So we got number 2, number 14, and number 26. And YouTube, this is a dangerous game. I'm a little excited. I'm looking forward to tonight a little bit. Just a little bit. Obviously a tough look for Denny. Um, his nickname was the Wizraeli. Uh, he is from Israel. And I'd say probably 95% of Portland, Oregon is pro Hamas. So that's a tough destination for him. I wish you all the best, Denny. Um, so the Hawks are on the clock. I have seen some, I have heard some mumblings about them just reaching and going with Klingon as like a defensive anchor behind Trey. First of all, the only pick tonight at number two that could really piss me off for the Wizards would be Klingon. Using a number two pick for a clunky white guy that can't score outside of two feet. No disrespect to him in UConn. Great college player. But we keep it real here on AP Entertainment. American whites that are 7'2 do not work in the NBA. Especially when they're old school big men. Like Klingon would be a number one pick in the 1980s. But before we keep going too much. And it looks like Atlanta's draft room is celebrating. So they got their pick in. I'm breaking out tonight. No, my wife and I are actually uh, moving soon, we're moving back to Maryland. Uh, been in Arlington here for a while. For my DMV people, we're heading back to Maryland, heading back home. And uh, so we're in the midst of packing, so I don't have too much tonight. I do got, you know, the homie G, G Wiz and always John up there for some good luck. We'll rub the nose a little bit, you know, rub the nose a little bit. And I'm breaking out for the first time the Karam Butler bobblehead. Now my homie Rayhan, shout out to Rayhan, got this for me at a game. And uh, gave it to me. He's, he's a Celtics fan, so he didn't want it. Must be nice. And uh, I'm saving it to break out for a video. So we're going to break it out right now while we still got some time. Bro. Dog. My DC people, you know those gift shops that be like in or around metro stations? It looks like Teddy had the boys go down one of them gift shops in 2017 after Trump got elected and they round up all the old Obama bubble hits and they put Karan Butler's name on it, bro. Who the hell is that? Bro, that's Obama. That's Barack. That's number 44, bro. That ain't Karan Butler. <laughs> It's so bad, it's good. We gotta, we gotta display that right there. Shout out Tough Juice, man. Wow. So the Wizards went, won 15 games this year. Obviously dead trash. Now, I actually said to myself this morning, if, if Kuzma and Denny are still on this team in October, I'm already gonna start losing faith in the new management. Because there's not, the, by the time we're good again, the only person that's on the roster now that's still gonna be on the team is Cool Bali. So there's no reason to hang on to anyone. And I was actually pleasantly surprised that Denny got moved tonight. Um, so again, that's like more omens to be feeling good tonight. All right, here's the first pick. Let's see who the Wizards will definitely not be getting. I hope they take Sar so that we don't have an opportunity to get him. Riza Shea? I'm just gonna call him Zachary. 
Okay. So uh, the the smart money was on Zachary. Zachary there, Zachariah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shout out to France. So I'm not down on Sar. I'm not gonna be mad if that's who we pick. But the Wizards won 15 games. When you are that bad, you cannot draft. You can't. You can't have a bus. You can't have a season that atrocious and come out with nothing. In my opinion, Stephon Castle is just good at basketball. He might not have the same, you know, height or ceiling or potential as these as the two French guys. But I know for for fact, I was very impressed. He was a five-star recruit but still found his role, did his role, did his job to help UConn win a national championship as a freshman. Very impressive for him to take a step back and do that. He can defend in the NBA day one. Honestly, the jump shot needs work, but I think you can throw him out there immediately and he can handle playing in the NBA. I want Castle. That would make me the happiest out of the possible picks at number two. Now, if they go with the upside of Sar, I'll understand and I'll reserve my judgment for a couple years because it is gonna be a couple years before we really know what he is. Castle, you kind of already know the type of player he is. He's just, you would hope, is going to get better at those things. Sar, we have no idea. Now back to Castle. Obviously, preseason, if you tell me, oh, the Wizards had the number two pick, Stephon Castle is not who you would have in mind. He's more like the 11th or 12th pick, maybe. But we, we can't control who's in the draft. We just got to do the best we can. And in my opinion, he is the most sure thing just – won't be a bust, probably won't be an all-star, but he's good at basketball. I can see him being a starter on a future Wizards playoff team. And that's all I got to say about my man, Stephon Castle. But we're on the clock. We got about four minutes left, so I'm going to take a break here, and I will see you guys back at selection time. Here we go. Okay, uh, Alex Sor is heading to DC. I'm thrilled, as you guys can see. <laughs> they just showed a group of Wizards fans. They were wearing Guzma jerseys, and then Denny and Rui jerseys. <laughs> R.I.P. All right, so we're gonna have to get the big fella that uh, you know a chance similar to Cool Bali. Uh, Ted's getting his dream of building the French national team here because uh, you know, there's no local fans left. There's like, you know, 10 of us left. So he's trying to build that international fan base. But in five years when Castle's the better, better player, best believe I'll be clipping this. 6'11 <laughs> and three quarters. We'll call that seven feet. Um, again, we're not going to know what he is for a couple years. I don't love uh, having a rookie center with no point guard. Maybe we'll get a point guard at 14. That'd be nice. All right, they're rolling the tape here. Obviously, highlights are going to be all the best of. Um, but Brian Keeves got a new big man. Uh, front office, Will Dawkins, Michael uh, Winger. Coming off their first year uh, watching trash basketball. So, you know, we're kind of starting fresh here. And uh, look, y'all, I don't got too much to say because 19-year-old international guys, they're just, you know, it is what it is. They're showing the French top 10 picks right now. And just to prove my point, uh, Nilakina for the Knicks, trash. Killian Hayes, trash. Obviously, Wembyama is one of the best prospects ever. And then you got Sar and Richeche, who are unknown. So it's, it's not like France has this, you know, deep bag of solid picks. Um, and there's just not that many big-time international big men that were, like, the big part of teams. Now, you can save the comments of, what about Nikola Jokic and Dirk Nowinski and Victor Romayamba? Literally two of the best players of all time. And then uh, one of which was in the second round, wasn't even supposed to be good. And then one of the best prospects ever. So you can save the comment. I got it. Houston's next. We'll see what they do. All right, Adam Silver's back. Who's going to Houston? The Young Gunners. Oh, Reed Shepard. Okay, but I like Reed for them because they're up and down. They want someone that can shoot it, and this also 
possibly opens up an opportunity for them to trade some, one of their guards that they already have to free up some space and get something back for them. So for Houston, I actually like Shepard there. For, on the Wizards, he would have been a train wreck. I mean, the, he had no help. Everyone on the Wizards is starting from the ground up. So, again, we're building the French national team. And they're both they're gonna have a lot of growing pains, and they both have to be good. Reed Shepard doesn't have to be that good with what Houston's building. He he's he they they targeted a role immediately for him, and he'll be able to slide right into it. Kind of like Kispert for us. Kispert was drafted for a specific role, and he's been good at that role. If you drafted Corey Kispert at number two for the Wizards, we'd be screwed. By the way, I love that Reed didn't even bother to get like one of the fresh haircuts. Like this is what every like, well, not now. Because now in high school, kids, like, try to dress like they're 30. Back when I was in high school, that was the 17-year-old white boy cut certified. It's like how we got the Air Dad ones. That was the 17-year-old white boy cut right there. And he, <laughs> he rolled up to the NBA draft wearing it. I love it. <laughs> Shout out Reed Shepard. Man, that's hilarious. I like that pick for Houston, though, like I said. All right, the Spurs pick is in. Adam Silver will be up shortly. There's no doubt in my mind Castle's going here. Why? Because the Spurs know how to eye good basketball players. Uh, future All-Star Stephon Castle to the Spurs. Must be nice. All right, here comes the big man himself. Castle to the Spurs, man. God, look at his chain. Rocking a castle on his neck. We could have been bringing that swag to DC. Ugh. I decided about two weeks ago that I liked Castle the most in this draft. And if we got him, I was going to like buy a jersey and everything. I was going to be all in. The only jersey I got right now is Agent Zero. Like I don't even buy jerseys that much anymore, especially with the clown franchise like ours. Most players are only here three years. Obviously, I had John at one point. I sold my Brad one. <laughs> uh, man, but I love Castle, man. I love his game, and I wish him the best. And he's crying. And he's crying walking up to the stage. Oh, you know, you just know, like, day one of practice, he's going to be all in. Oh, Sar could be good. Sar could be good. Sar could be good. Sar could be good. Hey, Sar, Sar could be Sar could be good. Could be. <laughs> but real quick, man, before we get to the number five pick, rounding off the rounding off the top five. Well, uh, if you, again, this is your first time watching. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, check out my channel. I do a lot of pop culture, you know, entertainment, TV stuff, movies. Um, I'm currently reacting to House of the Dragon every Sunday night. Right after the episode, I give I record immediately my raw reaction to what happened. I gotta say, I thought my second video for House of the Dragon was pretty hilarious. I was actually laughing at myself while editing it. Because episode one did pretty good. Uh, but YouTube buried it. Uh, so, I want to go check that out. And always, if you don't want to subscribe, I understand. But if, if you've watched to this point, please give me a like on the video. Help me with the algorithm. Again, I'd really appreciate it. Because if YouTube don't see a certain amount of likes in a certain amount of time, videos like that kind of just get buried and lost to time. Real quick, I gotta, I gotta pop back in before Detroit. So I just opened up my Wizards group chat with some of the boys. And uh, shout out my man, Uncle Nick, the Sturl, the sausage man. He said Alex was getting emotional. I effing love it. Let's go. And then my man Josh said, I'd be emotional too. Come into this shithole of a franchise. <laughs> and then this, uh, Sturl said... Hopefully Sar can have a similar career to Hashim the Beat. We can only dream. <laughs> That's why you gotta love Wizards fans, man. Like we we truly we embody and accept and really ride with how trash we are. We've been trash my whole life. I'm 31. We had a couple good years with Gilbert, a couple year, good years with John, and everything else. We're one of the worst franchises in professional sports. So you gotta laugh. Like you gotta laugh at yourself. That's the only way to get through it. <laughs> I'd be crying too if I got drafted by this shithole franchise. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh man. Alright, we'll be back for Detroit. Oh, Ron Holland, some G League love. Alright. 
So the G League goes number five. Okay. Ron Holland's a name that's been around for a little bit. Obviously, he didn't go to college. He's got a lot of talent, a lot of athleticism. It says whether or not he ever hones that into skill, if you know what I mean. Um, I was only going to record for the top five at first, but I'm going to be back for the Charlotte pick because shout out Charlotte Bobcats slash Hornets. Really the only franchise in the league as trash as the Wizards. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to react to what they do as well. Wiz Nation, man. DC family. How are you guys feeling right now? Let me know in the comments how you're feeling about building our next playoff team. I've been calling it with my friends. We're winning the chip. NBA Finals 2031. D hashtag DC family. We ride 2031. Obviously, it's a long hashtag. I got to work on it. But how do you guys feel about building up to that 2031 championship with Koulibaly and Sar. Is Koulibaly even going to be part of that? Or should we just trade him too while we're at it? Let me know in the comments how you're feeling. The good thing is we're going to be trash next year. And also, we, we got to dump Jordan Poole. I don't care if you, if you eat the money. He cannot be on a team with other young guys trying to get better in the NBA. Can't do it. What was I saying? Ah. Me and sports, man. Sometimes I start to rant and I'm like, what were you even talking about? We're going to be just as bad next year, if not worse. So you would hope, I know the lottery's a little different now, but we can get a top three, hopefully number one pick next year. Then we're cooking with, then we're cooking with fire. Then we're cooking with fire, fire Kev. <laughs> we're cooking some gas now, Kev. We throw some gas on that fire. But the thing with next year is, like, if we get the number one pick, You really gonna take a white boy from Maine with the number one pick in the NBA draft? Now I know he a little different. Like he he athletic. Uh, he gonna be going to Duke. He's gonna be doing his thing. But with the number one pick in the league, man, that's tough. You think back like how many American whites have been the best player on a really good team since Larry Bird? It's a really short list. Like, for real, other than Gordon Hayward on Utah, who who even is it? Is it just him? I'm talking, like, good teams. Like, I feel like that Hayward-Utah team made the playoffs once, maybe twice before he left the bo for Boston. I don't, I don't know there's anyone else. It's just super rare. That's all I'm saying. Now, obviously, things change. Uh, was it Collier? I said that there's so many international guys now I'm saying American names with an accent. Isaiah Collier, I don't know, yeah, probably Collier. He was predict predicted to be the number one pick at the start of the season, and now he might be like 20th. So stuff changes. But I'm just saying it's something to think about. Just remember, like, no one's going to be up there. Even if they sign Kispert to an extension, they're going to trade him. The Kuzma thing baffles me. He just opened up a coffee shop downtown, so, like, him and Ted are BFFs, so he might end up being here the whole time. I mean, if, if you go to a role player on a good team and say, hey, you, do we have your permission to trade you to Dallas? Charlotte, here we go, Adam Silver. The French connection continues. Shout out France. We're building the French national team in D.C. and our fellow trash franchi franchise, the Charlotte Hornets, are also going the French route. So, uh, you know, we saved France in the 1940s. They saved us in the 1780s. Uh, maybe France is going to save Charlotte and D.C. here in the 2020s. You never know. Uh, but for real, uh, I'm going to take a break here until the Wizards' 14th pick. I'm going to be back for that. It's funny, when I started this, my draft video last year was 24 minutes, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to make a video that long again. I think we're well on our way to that. But once stuff starts popping off, I mean, I got a lot to say. But thanks again for joining me. Subscribe, like, and all that while I'm away. Check out the rest of my channel, see if anything's popping for you. And I will be back with the Wizards' number 14 pick. Will we be getting a future point guard to go with our forward and center? We'll see. Apparently our pick's in. Uh, 
So yeah, the boys are not at all aligned on what to do here at 14. But I think, I think we got to go um, the kid from USC. I'd, I'd also be fine with uh, Pitts guard, uh, Carrington. But yeah, man, I'm ready. I think we got to go Collier because I, the man, he, at one point again was supposed to be a top three pick. He had a really bad freshman year, but let's just go best available. We need a point guard. Technically, he's not the best available, but you know what I mean. Like, at one point, he was thought to be that. And let's just roll with it. I'm almost more excited for this than I was for two. More of an unknown. That's the Providence scoop? Oh, no, that's a pit dude. Did I just say that? Yeah, all right. I like that pick, baby. Combo guard. Play some defense. They had that sick win at Duke this year. I remember him. He was yelling at the crowd and shit. Oh, and I'm just learning my man's from Baltimore. Hometown, let's go. Hometown pick. Yes. Oh. Y'all don't understand, man. I, I don't know the last time I was excited about a Wizards draft pick, and it came with a freshman guard from Pitt at number 14. I love that pick, baby. Bob. My man. I thought it was Bob. Oh, it's, it's Carlton. Okay. Bob Carrington. That's a tough name. I love it. 6'5", young kid. Gonna be bringing that swag to the district. Okay. 18. Let's go, baby. I'm with it. Let's check out those shooting percentages. As a freshman, he shot 32% from three, so it could be worse. Not great, could be worse. Uh, that probably means the shot's not broken, at least. You can get better. Um, five rebounds, four assists, all-around guy. I like it. I love that pick. I like that pick a lot at 14. Let's go. DC family. All right. I'm going to try to start editing. I'm going to tear this down a little bit. I'm going to be back handheld for pick 26, but that's over an hour from now. So I'm going to take a little break, and I'll be back for that last Wizards pick. Let's go, baby. I love it. So I'm in the middle of editing. I thought I had about 10, 15 minutes left before 26. And I hear outside of my ear, the Knicks will be picking for the Wizards at 24. So I had to grab my camera real quick, pause YouTube TV, pause YouTube TV. I'm now recording again, and I'm ready to roll. Are we going? Collier, st Collier still available, available. I want Terrence Shannon just for fun. Here we go. Selfish pick. He'd be fun. Fun to watch. I don't even know what the trade is. Like, I don't know what we gave up for this. Okay, I do not know who Keyshawn George is. I'll keep it 100. <laughs> I'm going to keep it 100. And I think they said he's from Germany. Probably a military kid. Uh, went to Miami. So we traded him 26 and then a second. So, obviously, uh, Dawkins and Winger really liked this kid. They thought it was worth moving up two spots to get him. They thought someone else was going to get him. So because of that, I'm going to say I like it. That means they're doing their research. They're doing their homework. They were all in. They wanted this pick to be used for a kid that actually has some upside. So for that, I'm going to say I support the pick. Pick 14 was my favorite of the night. But overall, I think this was a positive, a rare positive night for DC family here on draft night. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. Signing off a little earlier than I thought it would be tonight. Uh, I'm a little tired, so I want to get this video out. But thank you so much for joining me. If you made it to this point, you're a real one for real, and I really appreciate you. DC family. Winning the chip. Hashtag, we're running the finals in 2031. Let's get it going. 2031, Washington Wizards, NBA champions. I will see you guys next time. Peace.